Epilepsy and seizures are a condition that controls and dominates your life. And as with many other ailments, emotional stress and physical and psychological trauma plays an impactful role in this condition from surfacing, especially if you were never challenged with this and then just out of the blue, you're diagnosed with epilepsy. What happened? Hi, my name is Yvette Rose, author and founder of Metaphysical Anatomy, which is a book that guides you to understand hidden emotional messages in the emotional body. And welcome to today's topic, which is understanding and uncovering hidden emotional stress behind epilepsy and seizures. Now, if you're challenged with this condition or know someone who is, then I don't have to tell you how frightening it is to see this or witness this experience. Now, it's also one of the most debilitating experiences to also have because not only do you lose physical control, you also lose conscious control of your mind and your body. Now, epilepsy and seizures can also be triggered when you, for example, have an injury to your brain. Now, in some cases, but not all cases, epilepsy and seizures can also now be the final end result of lack of oxygen in the brain during birth. It can also be as a result of brain tumors, lack of sleep, abusing alcohol, poor nutrition, and also infections in the brain area that can damage the mitochondria cells, which lacks protein cells to restore unhealthy cells. Now, I would also highly recommend my video about hidden emotions behind a stroke as well, because it's very closely related, these emotional messages in the body. Now, this condition is also starting now to affect more and more people. Almost about 150,000 Americans are diagnosed with this condition yearly. And one in 26 people are diagnosed during their lifetime. And 65 million people globally are affected. Now, epilepsy and seizures are also the fourth most common neurological ailment for example, after migraines. And note, I also have a video about migraines. If you want to find out more about that on my YouTube channel, also my podcast, then you could go have a look at that as well. Now, here, for example, now apart from migraines, it's also stroke and then Alzheimer's. Now, let's move over to the emotional body and also the hidden messages and then the stress that has been held there and the meaning behind that. Because when you look at an element, right, and the causes of it, that can tell you exactly what is emotion going on or did happen in the person's life. Now, the most amazing part is that in most cases where these emotional messages are stored in specific parts of the body is universal because our blueprint is the same. So storing emotions in similar places and also the intensity of it is held and built on over generations to be expressed in your lifetime if you experience certain emotional stress from your environment. Now, I have seen, for example, a pattern where people who suffer from these conditions have been on the receiving end of regular gaslighting, right? Twisting communication and also truth to the point where this person now's their own truth has become a twisted mess. Not knowing how to communicate clearly, for example, how they feel because their attempt to communicate themselves have been attacked and judged and questioned to the point where other people's truth have become their truth, causing a sense of defragmentation of their sense of self. So if this is you, then you might have found yourself feeling overwhelmed faster than normal. And when you are confronted in a way that leaves you feeling unresourceful, triggering the old subconscious fear of being overwhelmed and verbally cornered by different people and different judgments and opinions. Now, if you've piled all your emotions into one bag, then that bag is overflowing. But the more emotions that you suppress, the more explosive the outpour of the emotions are going to be when you are provoked. And just like any other person, you also have a threshold. However, most people will have anger outbursts in the form of verbal rage. Right now, your outbursts in this case might actually border more on passive aggressive responses with what I would call silent outbursts, right? Within. 
Of course, now also with a certain extent, right, with this deep suppressed rage is also overflowing in your words and your actions. And you may actually have been pushed too hard during your childhood and there was no room for mistakes. And if you are painfully sensitive to criticism, then the slightest disagreement strike you in the heart, leaving you feeling upset and angry or very resentful. And you've become overly sensitive now to criticism. And you may even lash out in the, because of that frustration that you feel of not having clear discernment about how you should communicate your personal boundaries. Now you start to accept and to believe the regular criticism of others, right? And that now causes you to become your own worst critic. And judgments that have also been expressed to you, right, has now become your inner dialogue and also your relationship with yourself. And you can mentally overwhelm yourself with this dialogue to the point where you start to disassociate from your environment and also your sense of self. Now, you may also have been overloaded with drama and also with abuse and high expectations during your childhood, leaving you with feeling with the sense that you are set up for failure. And you also perhaps feel deep down that you resent people who've pushed you too hard, right? Leaving you feeling unable to enjoy life. And this in turn can actually now cause you to go down roads and avenues that are connected to joy, but might normally go against your normal standards and values. And it's almost like you, you needed to rebel with a subconscious intention to find your own individuality, because you may have suffered trauma as a result of influential people losing control of their circumstances and emotions, and it was projected onto you and also their fear-based view of seeing how a woman should be and act and react and now fighting against that because there could be a part of you that feels that you can't just gracefully have it but there's a pattern of needing to fight for it now there could also be a trauma related to sexual abuse or emotional abuse in the immediate family or ancestry line and now you turn violent emotions, these suppressed violent emotions and thoughts inward. And you may also feel that you have to punish yourself for not being good enough and feeling unable to behave in a way that is pleasing to influential people. Now, there are two angles that I want to explain these hidden emotional patterns. You know, what's also happening here is that a previously inactive trauma has now recently been triggered. And a trauma from this lifetime may have been activated, right? A suppressed ancestral pattern or trauma. Now, this, for example, may be subtle, yet it has a very big physical impact on you. And you may also have been born, right? Overly sensitive to certain behaviors of other people. Now, many symptoms are also caused by an inherited pattern, which is later activated. And it is important to understand that this does not necessarily mean that it's anyone's fault within the family that this condition was triggered. You may just have suffered a great deal of rejection and abandonment trauma that has been heightened in the ancestry line and also your immediate family that made you now overly sensitive to be on the receiving end of actions and words that can make you feel this way. Now, this could especially be true for your mother, for example, especially while she was pregnant with you. And these circumstances left you feeling lost. It left you feeling out of control and unsafe and alone. So these patterns, these emotional states, you could actually be sharing with your mom. Now, the other angle is also that during womb stages, meaning when you were in your mother's womb, you were aware of your mother's anxiety levels and she also could have pressed down on her womb hoping it would settle you down especially when you started kicking around too much especially when you were trying to indicate that you feel discomfort because of what she's feeling or what her environment is causing you to feel feeling that energetic penetration of the stress from it now this may have caused you as the fetus to feel uncomfortable and too controlled right, to move around freely and as a result also of your mother's hostile response by perhaps pressing down on her womb. Now, your mother may also have experienced emotional traumatic times while she was pregnant with you and she may have had relationship problems that challenged her security and also her future, right, and her partner may also have betrayed her, right, especially while she was pregnant with you, 
bringing up deep, fierce emotions of betrayal and feelings of injustice. And this observation fascinated me, right? Because I noticed that in many cases, there's a strong predisposition of epilepsy. For, in, in, for example, now, if that's you in your case, is triggered while you actually were in your mother's womb. Now, why and how does this take place? Because there is no real, there are, it's almost like there's no real interactive neural stimulation during womb stages. Though, the emotional body of you, right, of your body, it mimics your mother's emotional body from head to toe. And over time, right, your emotional body then starts to program that. And so that what your mother is experiencing, like mental stress, or for example, she had a traumatic moment, Right? Her mind, whatever it is that she processes mentally and emotionally, transfers to your emotional body. Now, this is one of, the new, one of my few explanations from my research as to why a child can also be born with epilepsy instead of developing it later in life. Now, in this point that I'm trying to make here is that the threshold that has been hit, there's two here in this case, right? So don't get confused. One is coming from the womb stages of what you program from the emotional stress that your mom felt, that you are now reliving, reinforcing that stress. Now, let's say your mom had a really great pregnancy. Then what you're feeling is the predispositions of your ancestry, emotional memories that have set you up with a heightened as a threshold for experiencing this, right? Meaning an oversensitivity to experiencing that later in your lifetime. Now, in this case, if you're wondering about children and how this condition have affected them, then explore how the mother felt before the pregnancy and also while she was pregnant. What was going on in her life? Right? The mother could have felt out of control and also feeling unable to make important and urgent decisions that needed to be made. Now, birth trauma also to the head area should also always be considered. And also, on a final note, what's even more interesting is that a misaligned pelvis could potentially be a cause as well, but not in all cases. Now, it can also, for example, cause unrelated issues to the nervous system and the tendons and the muscles and the joints that can contribute to the misfire of the brain activity. So guys, keep those really great questions coming and remember to grab your copy of Metaphysical Anatomy. You can grab it there on Amazon. And until next time, be the life that you are.